knock something off the bed. I'm sorry. It was an accident. like it. Well, could you not meet him in his studio? I could have, but he said he's had problems with his students before. He wants to check me out first. <sighs> what kind of problems? Stop worrying. I did exactly the same thing with you when we first met, remember? Yeah, would well, you not think it's a little bit dangerous? Look, this is a great opportunity for me. And he sounds like the perfect teacher. It, he was at the Philharmonic. He said he's trained loads of students for the Royal Academy. Plus, he's local. So he wants to meet you in this cafe? And if I'm OK, he's going to give me a free assessment. That's great, isn't it? We're going to go through Bach's cello suite number one prelude. And if he thinks I'm good enough, he's going to take me on. You know you're good enough. I'm going to be late. Wish me luck. Love you. Good luck. And you know I love you too. I'll see you later tonight, OK?
Can I get you anything? Tea? Coffee? Donut? I'm just waiting for someone. Shout if you need anything. Hello? Miss Taylor? There's a telephone call for you. Hello? Yes, it is. Oh, yes, I know exactly where it is. It's just around the corner. Yeah, I'll be there in a minute. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Come again. Customers like these, no wonder we're going bust. Hey. Leave. Hello? Eve, can you hear me? Eve? 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 You did it again. It's unbelievable. You're not concentrating, are you? I know you can do it right. Stop thinking about whatever drivel you saw on TV last night, or dreaming about some dirty boy. Your parents are paying me to turn you into something resembling a cellist. And I don't want to be accused of taking money under false pretenses. So. We will try it again, and then again if necessary, until you get it right. Understood. Well, do I make myself perfectly clear? Yes, Mr. Corcoran. I'm sorry.
Hello? Who is it? Why am I here? What do you want? Is this some kind of joke? Let me go. Let me go. I want to go home. You can't keep me here. I want... I want to go. You have to let me go. No one is coming to rescue you, Eve. <laughs> let me go. Open this door now. Just be calm, Eve. And you won't be harmed. What the hell do you mean? What the hell are you talking about? Are you insane? Let me go. Let me go! Jamie Harris? Yeah? I'm Detective Inspector Dobson. You're here to talk about your girlfriend, Eve Taylor? Yeah, look. I told the police yesterday that she went missing, and you've done nothing about it. It's just procedure, Mr Harris. We have to make sure we have all the details. I told them everything yesterday. I understand that, Mr Harris, but we do have to go through this one more time. Yeah, it's procedure, right? I'll let just get on with it. When was the last time you saw Miss Taylor? Yesterday morning, the Hobbs End Cafe. Why was she there? No, she was meeting her new music teacher. Male? Female? Name? Male. I don't know his name. Did she know him before? Did they have some kind of friendship or anything that you knew of? What? No. Look, I know where you're going with this. And this has nothing to do with me. It's not like she left me for another man. You're absolutely sure there's no possibility? No. No argument, okay? No other man. Alright? She's gone missing. It's completely unlike her. And I just want you to do your job and find her. I can assure you, Mr. Harris, we've got our best people on this. And the chance of finding her? A lie? Try not to worry. Most missing persons do come home. Now, this music teacher she went to see, what instrument does she play? A cello. A cello teacher? Is that important? No, not at all. I assure you I'm taking this straight to our superintendent. And his name? Barnbrook. Detective Chief Superintendent Barnbrook. Come in. Morning, sir. Morning, Sam. What you got? Not a lot of actual evidence, sir, but quite an interesting theory. Oh, Christ. All right, let's see it. Well, there's a lot of similarities between this missing girl and the Holmeswood case. No bodies, no clues. That's why the papers called it the Pied Piper case. But look, what we're dealing with here is one missing girl. One of the other common factors in the two cases is that this new missing girl was also having cello lessons. Was she? Who from? Mr. Corcoran, sir. Giles Corcoran. Sorry, sir. I realise this must be painful for you. Well, why would it be painful for me, eh? Could it be because it nearly derailed my whole career? You must know what happened. I was crucified. 
Maybe if you haven't been quite so visible. Yeah, you're quite right, Sam. If I hadn't been on the telly every other night, telling the whole world how confident I was that I'd soon nab him. Just needed the evidence. I was convinced he would slip up, but no, he never did. If I do decide to pursue this line of inquiry, I want you to keep totally stum. I don't want the press to get a whiff of it. So if I open my newspaper in the morning and see headlines proclaiming the return of the Pied Piper, I will not be an happy man. This is my last warning. If I catch that animal rooting around in my garden once more, you'll be able to use it as a hearthrug. Do I make myself clear? Fix that fucking fence woman. Oh, that's an awful thing to say. You're, you're just a cruel, hateful man. Oh, come on, Pep. <laughs> it gets easier, you know. You become numb. Who are you? Can you help me get me out of here? How can I do that? I'm not free myself. I'm not even supposed to talk to you. If we talk, we get punished. Look, this guy's insane. We have to get out of here. Forget it. If you try, he'll kill you. If we work together, we'll have a better chance. Please. Just stop it. It's not possible. Your name's Eve? Yes. It's not just us here. There's another girl here too. But she won't speak. Oh my God, you mean there are three of us down here? He's a psycho, isn't he? You'll realise soon enough. He hasn't told you the rules yet. Rules? He will leave you alone for a bit. He always does. We can't speak anymore. If he catches us, he will hurt us. How many days have you been here? Days? I've been here about 14 years. I'm sorry. Maybe I shouldn't have told you. Why me? Why me? Once you resign yourself, it gets a bit better. You're the replacement for the last girl, Sarah. She wasn't here as long as us. About five years, I think. Sarah Andrews. Sarah? What happened to her? I can't tell you. What happened to her? You don't want to know. Tell me! Keep your voice down. We can only talk when he's out or when he's playing. He's coming.
What are you staring at? Listen. You have to let me go. I've got a boyfriend. He'll be worried sick. Talk to me. It's time for your first lesson. I'm not doing anything you say. You will keep quiet and never talk to the other girls. Why should I obey you? You don't want someone like me around here. I never do what I'm told. It's not school. Do not touch it until I get back. you. the upstate information you wanted in Mr Corcoran, sir. Well, well done, Sam. That was quick. Right. Well, it seems he left his last job at Holmeswood a few months after the last girl disappeared. Did he now? Although he was never charged, he was always in the frame. And the papers weren't very kind to him either. Yeah, well, they were only telling the truth. His links to all three missing girls was an inescapable fact. Bit of a nomad, it seems. Moved out of the immediate area and he's renting in Waterbury. The estate agents say he's been there for about six months. They also say he's used them about four or five times in the last ten years. They think he's used other firms to move to other locations. Yeah, his past catching up with him, you see. Yeah, I'm not the only one who thinks he's a Pied Piper, you know. What's he been living on? Must be his music lessons keeping him afloat. Although he teaches cello and violin, I can't imagine he gets that many punters. Should have taken up electric guitar. We did hear a rumour he's got some kind of inheritance, but we've nothing firm on that. It seems to me, Sam, that every time he chooses a new neighbourhood, someone recognises him and he has two up sticks. Yeah. Amazing, really, after all this time. Although his face was plastered all over the papers, he had it worse than you. Oh, the difference being I didn't kill anyone. I spent quite a lot of time with that man. There were three separate investigations, you know. Anyway, we got to know each other quite well and he knew that I knew he'd done it. But he let me know with his face and his... Tone of voice and his supercilious attitude. Laughing at me, he was. All right. You know I've done it, let's see you prove it. Typical of his type. Arty farty public school dropout. Ex hippie, probably. I know he had a conviction for possession back in the 70s. Couldn't make it as a musician. Ends up teaching fiddle at some second rate girls' school. We've gone too far this time. This is getting a bit personal, isn't it? Sir? Personal? Personal, Sam. Someone snuffs out the lives of four beautiful, promising young girls and then laughs in my face. You tell me what man wouldn't take that a bit personally. Well, first thing tomorrow, we're going to have a few words with that bastard.
啊。Are you okay? Just about. You would have died if you hadn't taken the antidote. He's a sick fuck. You shouldn't resist him. He doesn't care about how much pain he dishes out. And one way or the other, he will break you. Should you even be talking to me? Don't try to move. The pain will go in time. Are you a musician? Yes. I'm a cellist. Why? That was him earlier, you know. He plays so beautifully. That's why I'm here. I thought you'd be teaching me. All that beauty. But when the music stops. <laughs> and he hurts you. Oh, he's a sick bastard. Once you conform, it's mostly not too bad. If you do everything he wants. Who is he? He lives this double life. I've heard him talking to people and guests upstairs. He's like a different person. Even his voice changes when he's down here with us. I don't know how to describe it. Dual personality. Like Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, he lives his normal life and then all this. I'm not sure if that's why he wears the mask. Or just to hide his identity. In case one of us ever escaped. We've never seen his face. Alex. You mentioned a girl before me. Yes. She ripped his mask off when she first arrived. He went crazy and started beating her over and over. Did she die then? No. But nearly. She was more like you, stubborn. But in the end, she pretended to give in. I think she was biding her time. Every now and then, he would take us upstairs. Not very often, but sometimes. And when he wasn't looking, Sarah stole the odd thing. Paper, pens, spoons. I saw her taking a piece of rope once. Why? I could hear her scraping, making something, writing the details down. She never told me what she was doing. Maybe she thought I would tell him. I don't know. What do you think she was doing? A weapon. I think she was making a makeshift weapon. I think she hid it somewhere was going to try and kill him, but... Well, he killed her first. He seemed different that day. As if he thought killing her was something she wanted. I don't think he cares about death. How often does he go out? Sometimes he leaves the house for days. He just leaves a pile of food for us. We think he's probably got another home somewhere else. We don't want him here. But when he's away, it's a bit scary as well. We depend on him for our food and water. If something happens to him while he's away, an accident or something, even if he just decided not to return or the police caught him, well, if he doesn't come back, we're all dead. The hard fact is, we depend on the monster returning to the lair. Oh, I just 
wonder if I can survive this. It's not about survival. It's about acceptance. Once you realise that, it will get easier. No. No, I'm not like that. I'm scared, but I'll keep on fighting. Everyone does in the beginning. When I was a kid, they told me there was no such thing as monsters. But there are. Will she be okay? I hope so. Sometimes I think he will kill her. God, no. I wish he didn't beat her so. I can't take this. It makes me sick. Are you sure she'll be all right? Sometimes the only comfort comes, knowing that it didn't happen to you. How can you live like this? Don't you remember life outside? Don't you want out of this? Please, Eve, don't talk about it. I don't want to know. I don't understand. This is a living hell. Please, Eve. Just don't. Mr. Cox, Mr. Robert Cox. What do you want? I'm trying to find the identity of the Pied Piper. And I've been told you might know something. But it's my girlfriend. I'm trying to trace her. And if you do know anything, then I'd be really grateful for your help. You better come in. I'm sorry I fear about your girlfriend. Eve, did you say? Yeah, yeah, Eve. She played the cello. And she had this, she had this lesson with this music teacher. I haven't seen her since. Oh, Christ. I've looked through all the press coverage online. And I came across an article that said, you thought that Giles Corcoran was the Pied Piper? Is that piece of shit Corcoran all right? And what makes you so sure? Three girls, all jealous, all his pupils, and he was the last one to see him alive. I can't believe this is happening. That super copper knew us. What do you mean, Superintendent Barnbrook? Barnbrook, aye. He's the one that named Cochrane on TV. Yeah, that's still all over social media. I know she's still alive. Nobody's doing anything. I just, I feel so helpless. I've, I've got to find her. There's one major problem here, because if he's keeping her locked up and the police arrest him... If he doesn't tell them where she is, she could starve. The 
police need to catch him red-handed. That's what I'm saying. Bring that cop on now and kick it up the fucking arse. I need to speak to D.I. Dobson. It's urgent. Jamie Harris. She knows about the case. D.I. Dobson. It's Jamie Harris. Look, I need to speak to you about Eve Taylor. I realise you're upset, but we are taking this seriously. Mr. Harris, I can assure you, we are looking into every possibility. It's James Harris, Eve Taylor's boyfriend. Do you want to take it? I can tell you, Mr. Harris, that no other police department would be taking this case as seriously as we are. The chief superintendent is giving this his utmost attention. But like I said, Eve could walk through the door at any moment. The best thing you can do is just wait by the phone and we'll let you know as soon as we hear anything. <coughs> if the Pie Piper case gets out, who will not be getting out. Well, hope not. He's threatening to go to the papers. <sighs> I can sympathise. Poor bugger. James Harris, Eve Taylor's boyfriend, sir. Oh, I hope for his sake she does just walk through the door. Case closed. Yeah, well, let's hope so. Oh, by the way, sir. Giles Corcoran, he's coming into the station tomorrow. Yeah. Do we know for certain it's him? Sarah Andrews, Joanne Cox, Alex Jones. He killed them, I'll prove it. Sam, shut the door, will you? Sit down for a minute. Is there a problem, sir? No, no, no problem. Uh, it's just the end of the day and I uh, thought maybe we could, we could have a chat. Uh, would you mind having a drink with me, Sam? You're off duty. I keep this baby here for special occasions and very bad luck. Oh, if you insist, sir. There we are. It's in the best of times and the worst of times. Absolutely. I suppose all this might seem a, a bit strange, a bit out of character. Just a bit, sir. I know you have your doubts about all this. It seems to me there's a different breed of copper out there now. Where all this is... It's just another job to them, like working in the supermarket. But for me, all this... This has been my life. Now, I know taking this case off you... It can get to you, that kind of thing. When you look at me now, I, I used to have a great marriage. Uh, I would go in places with my career, I was keen to get the job done and right the wrongs. I wouldn't like to see you get obsessed like that. Uh, how's your bloke, Sam? Oh, he's fine, thanks, sir. Doesn't seem to mind the long hours. Sometimes I think he can't wait to get rid of me. <laughs> well, you look after it while you can because one day you might just turn around and find there's nothing left but the job. Don't you end up like me? I think I'm pretty practical, sir. I don't take these cases too personally. If you don't mind me saying, sir, you talk about the girls being dead, but it sounds as if you really want to believe they're still alive. I really hope they are. I don't know. I love my job, but don't take it home with me. I'll just be going, sir. Don't expect to have another conversation like this. I won't, sir.
fucked. He drugged me. He's coming. Please, Eve. Don't cause problems. It will be okay. But you must listen and be attentive. Allow me to introduce Eve. Hello, Mr. Cochrane. I suppose I should say what a pleasant surprise. But it's not really a surprise. And it's not particularly pleasant. Why aren't you surprised to see me, sir? Oh, I knew it wouldn't take you long to discover my connection to poor little Eve. And I knew you wouldn't pass up the opportunity to try and pin something on me. As Eve Taylor's disappeared, you think that I've killed her. Or maybe I've got her locked away in a shed or a basement somewhere. Well, what do you want to ask me about Eve? Well, let's start with the last time you saw her. About the middle of September. And this was at your home, was it? Of course. When was the next lesson scheduled? It wasn't. What does that mean? It means Detective, Chief Superintendent, that Eve Taylor is not my student. That was her one and only lesson. That's all I can tell you. I met her 
Only the once. We had no other contact. I know nothing at all about her. I seem to remember. I told you something similar the last time we met. Only you didn't believe me. A very sad state of affairs, Mr. Corcoran, but really, we just followed on where the circumstances seemed to indicate we should go. What else should I have done? Well, perhaps you could have spent more time investigating the other suspects. Well, you see, there's the thing. Unfortunately, there weren't any. And that's one of the things that makes this case almost unique. The eerie similarity between the victims, the manner of their disappearance, the musical link, their connections to you. Now, I know that no concrete evidence was found to link you to any of this, but you had the opportunity, you had the means, and no alibi. Now, I know that coincidences do occur, but my experience tells me that they're not near as common as people think. And my motive? When it comes to the disappearance of attractive young females, we don't need to look for the rational motive. I don't think we need to trouble you any further today, Mr. Corcoran. If we need to speak to you again, we'll be in touch. But in the meantime, please don't leave the area without letting us know. We need to eliminate you from our inquiries, you see. You're not planning to eliminate me from your inquiries, are you, Chief Superintendent? You're insanely looking for some evidence that I am the Pied Piper. I'm dreadfully sorry. What's next, sir? Uh, let's check out his neighbours, see if they've noticed anything. I'm on it. All right. Yes? Who is it? What do you want? Sorry to disturb you. It's Detective Sergeant Dobson. Could I have a word? Well, it's about your neighbour, Mr Corcoran. A dreadful man. Absolutely dreadful. Really? He was so rude to me. Just because Bathsheba got into his garden and dug a little hole. He doesn't like anyone digging up his garden, eh? I don't know why. It's just a jungle. We did try to be friendly when he first moved in. Um, we, several of us went round and asked him if he'd like to join our neighbourhood watch scheme. He told us to... I don't like to use the words. Dear me. Uh, said he hated snoopers. <laughs> well, you would, wouldn't you, if you had something to hide? Does he have something to hide? Well, surely you know. Know what? He's that man. The one with the, the three young girls who disappeared. Um, ah, that case. They never found the bodies, did they? Well, you know, he was never charged. Oh, they never found the proof. Does he have many visitors? Uh, quite a few. Uh, he teaches cello and violin, and uh, I'm always asking him to keep the noise down, but of course he ignores me. Uh, mainly young girls, and he treats them like dirt, bellows at them when they don't come up for scratch, and I've seen several of them leave in tears. Does he go out a lot? Quite a bit. Sometimes he stays out overnight, mm, several times a week. Any idea where he goes? No, I'm afraid not. But I think it's somewhere in the country, because when he gets back, his car is covered with mud. He doesn't clean it for days. Well, you've been most helpful, Mrs... Miss Caldwell. Miss Caldwell, thank you very much. What the hell are you doing in my bloody garden? Eve Taylor. Where is she? I want answers. Do you? You're very tough with young girls. 
Well, how about a grown man? Tell me. Where is she? Where is she? Unless you get out of my garden right now, you're about to find out. Your choice. You're not going to get away with this. Do you hear me? If you've heard her, I'm going to kill you. You understand? I'm going to kill you. You got a minute, sir? Yes, Sam. As long as you can tell me you got something we can nail this bastard with. Afraid not, sir. James Harris is here again. Threatening to sue the police. Oh, just what we need. We got another bit of bad news as well, I'm afraid. Someone's leaked it to the press that it could be the Pied Piper back again. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ! Did I or did I not make it clear? Just sort it out for me, Sam, all right? Just sort it. Very good, sir. I will do. Did you speak to the neighbours? Mm, the woman next door remembers several girls coming out in tears. Did they? Oh, there's something else, sir. What? I spoke to the landlord at the pub. When he first moved to the area, he used to go in there every night. Drank like a fish, used to shout his mouth off. Anyway, one night he started boasting about this cottage he had in Wales. Well, that could be significant, couldn't it? Here, tell me this, Sam. If you're a villain and you want to get rid of a body somewhere where you can almost guarantee it would never be found, where in the UK would you go? And some of those remote areas is miles after mile after mile of absolutely sod all. Whereabouts in Wales, is it? Well, we think it might have been left by his mother, so I checked the inheritance records under the name Cochrane and bingo, there it was, complete with address. Bloody good work, Sam. Do you know what? I reckon we might have him here. And then the moment he goes anywhere near the M5, we'll stake the place out. Yeah, next time he visits the land of our fathers, we're going to be waiting for him. Mr Harris, are you all right? No. No, I'm really worried about Eve. I know you are. Look, I went to see Joanne Cox's uncle, and he told me Corcoran's the Pied Piper. He told me it's him. I mean, he kidnapped his niece. So there's every possibility he's got in. You can't just accuse someone. Not yet. Not without proof. Well, I went to see Corcoran. I was fuming. I was just about ready to do some damage. I climbed over his fence into his garden to see what I could find, and he threatened me. I sympathise with your position. I really do. But that could be construed as threatening behaviour on your part. So he kidnaps my girlfriend and you're going to arrest me? <sighs> Look, Mr Harris, just go home and get some rest. The superintendent is looking into this oh, yeah, person. Oh, yeah, I know about him. He thinks Corcoran's the Pied Piper as well. Superintendent Barnbrook is making this one of his priorities. Oh, look, I've had enough, OK? Robert Cox was right. Corcoran is the Pied Piper and you and Barnbrook need to pull your finger out. I mean, she could be trapped somewhere. We're doing everything we can. I'm going to the papers and I'm going to go find her myself. Mr Harris, that's not a good idea. Well, I really don't fucking care. Mr Harris, please calm down. I've given you every opportunity to go and find her. And what have you done? Tell me, what have you done? Nothing. So now it's up to me, isn't it? I'm done with this. We interrupt this program for a new flash. The man leading the investigation into the disappearance of the music student, Eve Taylor. Detective Superintendent Barbara told the news conference today that he has no information linking the incident to the Pied Piper case of a decade ago. Fucking Barnbrook. <laughs> Thank you.
Eve? Should you be talking to me? Can I ask you something? Of course. Why do you fight him so much? I have a life outside. I have a boyfriend, Jamie. He loves me. I love him. I just can't give up. But he will hurt you. I can't live here for 14 years. I'm, I'd rather die than be pulled over by that sick creep. He will break you, Eve. He breaks everyone in the end, one way or the other. No. No, he'll never break me. Not yet, but when you feel his hands all over you, touching you, your body goes numb, your mind switches off. However hard it is, I won't let him own me. He's having a party for us tonight. He will probably come for you. I'm not letting him touch me. If you try and stop him, he will just drug you. There's no choice. If that happens, I'll kill myself. That's what we all thought. He's coming. Celebration Eve. Why would I care? I can make you care. Leave me alone, you pervert. Don't you know I can do as I please? You disgust me. We need to bond with me. Never! Die. I'll get you away. You'll be nice to me when you leave. Or, or I will hurt one of the other girls. No. No, no. No, please. Please, you can't do that. Don't no, touch me. Please, please, don't no. touch me. No. 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 <laughs> leave her alone. Have I got the dudes you can ask? Joe, are you okay? No. Go away. We're not allowed to talk. If you want to talk, come here. Just leave her. I just feel so bad for her. Don't. It could be you next. Can I help you, sir? I'm looking for this girl. Okay. Have you seen her? Yeah, the police have already shown that to me. All I can remember is she didn't even buy a cup of tea. Well, and that's it? That's it. Are you sure? Look, I'm really worried about her and the police are doing absolutely nothing to find her. So if you know anything, then please just tell me. She was on the telephone and she said where she was going wasn't very far. Wait, what'd you say? She was on the telephone and she said where she was going wasn't very far. And you told the police this, yeah? I did tell them. They didn't seem that interested. Although they did buy a couple of jam donuts. Oh, typical. All right, look. Thanks for your help. It's okay. Tea, coffee, donut. And that's why I'm going bankrupt. I'm so sorry, Alex. Are you okay? 
We've been here a long time. We feel nothing now. Nothing. You just learn to live with your pain. We have to try and escape. If we work together, it's our only way. I don't want to die. I'll live like a slave if the choice is between life and death. wrong with her? It's where he hit her. He made her pregnant and he's beating her to get rid of the baby. Joe, I'm so sorry. You have to be quiet. If he hears you tonight then... It hurts. You have to be quiet. It hurts so he will kill you if he hears you again. Quiet! For God's sake! It was me, I made the sound. You have to be punished, Eve. <laughs> Inspector Barnbrook. I've been trying to speak to somebody in charge, but I just keep getting palmed off with D.I. Dobson. Cardiff Police have a lead. All right, OK, I I'll speak to D.I. Dobson. I can be at the police station in 15 minutes. Oh, thank you. I was beginning to think the police had pretty much given up on me. Slip up and you will lose because you are nothing but a loser. How dare you speak to me like that? Don't you know what I can do? <laughs> Whatever happens is your fault, Eve. Yours only. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. Ugh. 
You disgust me. They'll find you, and when they do, I hope they fucking hang you! There you are, sir. I've been trying to reach you all day. Bit of personal business, Sam. Well? He sprung the trap. Headed for Wales. I alerted Cardiff. They staked the place out. Anyway, they slipped up and he spotted them. Oh, Christ. Yeah, and he's on the run now. Is he? Well, that must mean that there's something there he doesn't want us to find, mustn't it? I think we've probably got him, Sam. Well, Mr. Corcoran, we didn't expect that. You're under arrest. Giles Corcoran, you are under arrest for possession and intent to supply. Hello, Barnbrook. He what? You're joking. Right? No, understood. No, 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 no. Send him straight back here if you can. All right, yeah, thanks. Bye. What did they say, sir? Well, I was right. He didn't get far. They soon caught up with him and fetched him back to his cottage, which apparently he doesn't own anymore. Only the barn is his now. So they made him open it up, and what did they find? But row upon row of cannabis plants. No. <laughs> It seems Giles Corcoran is some kind of fucking dope dealer. Well, Mr. Corcoran, violinist, music teacher, horticulturalist, you're full of surprises. Want to tell us about it? I inherited the farm. I knew, of course, that drugs were profitable. And voila. Where are those girls? You're delusional. 
Where have you buried those girls' bodies? I really think you should seek professional help, Chief Superintendent. Your endless attempts to try to link me to the Pied Piper will end up by destroying what's left of your brain. <laughs> Listen to me, you. You supercilious little bastard. Yes, you were molesting them. And when they called a halt to it, you had to get rid of them in case they decided to talk. If not now, then maybe further down the line, because you'd always be looking over your shoulder, wouldn't you? I know how maggots operate like you. Now, where are those bodies? You sad little man. You are. I'm fucking sick of this gentlemanly fencing. So now we're going to try the old-fashioned approach. We're all going to go down to that farm, and you're going to show us where every one of those bodies is buried. Oh, by God, I'll put my fucking fist through your fucking skull! Sir, remember this is being filmed. <laughs> Would you agree that the same person is responsible for all three disappearances? Yes, absolutely so. I have an alibi. You had no alibis. We established that at the time. I produced no alibi. Not quite the same thing. Why the fuck would you hide an alibi? I now have a man who is prepared to testify that he was with me at the time of the girl's disappearances. Check. Mate. If that's all the evidence you have that I'm the Pied Piper, then frankly, you're wasting my time. I imagine I'll only get a suspended sentence for my spot of gardening. Especially when I tell the court how I've been persecuted. You know, I think that might make the papers. Yes. Wouldn't that be splendid? You and I. All over the news again. Just like old times. <laughs> As they say, watch this space. Goodbye, Superintendent. Get him out of here. He's done this, Sam. I know he has. I've spent years on this case. Well, we'll know when we check his alibis, won't we? Ah, now, hold back on that, will you? Just for a day, I've applied for a search warrant on Corcoran's place. We're looking for drugs, aren't we? If it goes wrong, I'll take full responsibility. Why's that? Do you remember the woman next door said he didn't like her dog digging in her garden? I think we'll find Eve there. Sorry to disturb you again, Miss Caldwell, but we're trying to get into Mr. Corcoran's garden, but he's not home at the moment. We didn't want to disturb the neighbours by forced entry. Would it be okay if we came in and climbed over your wall? I suppose so. Oh, great. Thanks very much. Why do you want to get into his garden? Do you think something is buried there? No, no, no. It's just preliminary investigations at the moment. No need for concern. Okay if we go through? Yes, of course. Oh, thanks. Excuse us. I think we found something. Hello, Barnbrook. Sam, how'd it go? We found one of the girls, sir. I think it's Sarah Andrews, the third girl to go missing in the Holmeswood case. She's buried in Corcoran's garden. Christ. How long's she been dead? Days. We're not sure yet. Days? Are you sure that's not Eve Taylor? Definitely not, sir. 
Yeah, have you got Corcoran? No, he's still at large. There's one more thing, sir. Corcoran had post, and it's not for this address. Sam, can you send that to me? Yeah, I just want to have a look around, you know, have a sniff about. All right, yeah, thanks. Oh, Sam. Great job, yeah? All right, bye. You haven't put in a request for a handgun for a while, have you, sir? I haven't felt the need for one in a while. Let's hope I don't have to use it. I thought we had an intruder. But who is you? It was you, wasn't it, Eve? I 
I told you. Not to make a sound. Not a sound. Did you think someone would hear you? That's bad. That is bad. I'm not scared of you anymore. You should be, Eve. You should be. And thanks to my dear friend, Giles Corcoran, no one is coming to rescue you, Eve. It's the police. Mr. Corcoran, please open up. No one will find you. Ever. This is where it ends. Tonight, you will play for me. A prelude to our final act. I'm not playing for you again. Really? You will play for me, Eve. Or maybe your mother could take the place of your boyfriend. <coughs> you have disappointed me yet again, Eve. <coughs> So that's it, Eve. Your fate decided. Eve. I'm so sorry. Don't worry about me. To whoever finds this, if you are reading this and I am probably dead, I've been a prisoner here for five years. Below this building runs a sewer. I've made some tools and hidden them in the brickwork. I'm using them to escape and break through the brick, but it will take some time. Please use them to get out of this madhouse and bring this monster to justice. Yours forever, 
Sarah Andrews. So, Miss Taylor, you went to a neighbour's house and you called us from there. Yeah. And you have no idea who he is. But you are sure he's got a gun. Please, stop him. We will do, Miss. But something was lost 
in this big circus show The jugglers and clowns are all that's left Still your clown. 